Hi, Chad here with Purple Car Life. Got the John Deere 2210 subcompact tractor here. You can see you've got it jacked up. If you haven't watched our previous video about how I broke the John Deere 2210, go ahead and give that a look. You can pause this here, open a new tab, watch that video, we'll wait for you. Okay, now we're assuming everyone's watched the previous video and you know what happened to this John Deere 2210. If it's been a while and you forgot, or if this is an older video and you're watching it to see how to make this repair, here's a little reminder what happened. I was using the Artillian grapple to clear some crab apple trees, and I think what happened is a small stick caught under one of the front wheels, you know, a longer small stick. It just happened to come up at the exact right angle and go in between the guard and the guard to protect that hydraulic transmission fan, the cooling fan for the hydrostatic transmission. I think a stick went up in there. And let me talk to you about what happened when I called the dealerships, a couple dealerships and a repair shop to find out what it would cost to get that fixed. So when I did some research on Tractor by Net, a couple of the John Deere forums, I found that this is actually a fairly common problem with the 2210 and the 2305, but not only John Deere tractors, some of the Kubotas, the BX23, um, some of the other small compact tractors of multiple brands use a fan to cool the hydraulic transmission. And you have to have air flowing through that so you can't completely enclose it, you've got to have good airflow. So there has to be an opening somewhere or at least mesh. But in most of the designs, there's a like a skid plate underneath and then protection up above with the, just enough of a window that stuff can get in there. And it's actually pretty common for people to shear those blades off the fan or to break the blades off the fan. And the repair, I guess, is never easy. Um, there are a couple methods with the John Deere 2210. The drive shaft actually cannot be removed from this tractor. It's actually even really hard to uh, grease or lubricate. In fact, I've never done mine because it's impossible for me to get my grease gun into the Zerk on this back pin of the drive shaft. So I've actually never done that. Um, someone asked how many hours we have on here. I can give an update on that. I have 624 hours on this John Deere 2210. And I think I've owned it for probably 200 and some hours, uh, roughly. So in that time, I've never greased the drive shaft between the engine and the transmission. And I know that's something I need to do. I need to, at some point, find a way to get uh, access to that. And it seems like maybe this would be a good time because one of the ways to make this repair for that fan, which actually is bolted onto the drive shaft, so there's no way to get it off without removing the drive shaft uh, and sliding it off the end, according to the repair manuals. So the one way to get it off is split the tractor. You gotta split the transmission from the engine and then you can take that fan off of the drive shaft, replace it and bolt everything back together. Now in most cases, in order to do that, you need to take the floor pan and the seat and the fenders off of the tractor so that you can get down into that drive shaft area, unbolt, the engine area from the transmission, pull the drive shaft out. And I've made that much more difficult by installing my Curtis cab. I love the Curtis cab, but in this instance, I would have to completely remove the cab first before removing that pan, the floorboard, the seat, and the fenders to be able to get into that area. Now, of course, if we took this to the dealership, that would be additional labor that they would incur in breaking or splitting the engine from the transmission to get the drive shaft out and place that fan. I did talk to one John Deere dealership that said, don't worry about the cab, it's not a problem. The way we would do it is we would drop the entire hydrostatic transmission down out of the tractor. That would give us access to the drive shaft, replacing the fan and putting everything back in. Now, as you can probably figure, dealership repair costs in this would be pretty expensive because like I said, it's labor intensive. The part itself, which I have here, the John Deere fan, part number LVU802815, it looks like this. 
that fan cost is about $27. So not a bad price. I mean, it's, it's just a piece of plastic. It does have seven blades on it. So either my fan was already missing one blade, already had broken off at some point, or maybe I'll be able to see when I get down there, there's one left. But when I looked at it from underneath the tractor, it looked like they were all gone. So I'm missing, I think, seven out of seven blades. You can see it does have seven blades on the new one. So here's the moment of truth. What would it cost to have this repaired? Well, if you went with the split apart version, according to a couple of dealers, that could be somewhere around 12 hours labor. And the labor costs currently are about $90 an hour. Now that's not including the cab, so I would need to remove the cab myself or incur another four hours of removal labor and four hours of reinstallation labor. And four hours is the minimum. Some people have said it takes six to 12 hours to put the cab on. I found that for me, for the first time, it took six hours. If you wanna watch that video, I'll put the link up above. When we installed this Curtis cab, my time was six hours of install time. But of course the dealership doesn't do these on a regular basis. They weren't sure, so they estimated minimum four hours off and four hours on. So if you add that up, 12 plus four plus four, that's 20 hours at $90 an hour, really expensive to replace a $27 part. Now let's talk about the alternate method. The one dealership said, don't worry about the cab. They can drop the hydrostatic HST transmission out the bottom, remove the drive shaft, replace the fan that way. How much does that cost? They estimate 10 to 12 hours of labor. So again, you're looking at 10 to 12 times 90. So 900 to 1100 and some dollars in labor in that method. Now, if you've watched the channel, you know that one of the reasons we started the channel was because in purple collar life with a white collar day job and kind of a blue collar at home job managing this rural property, I referred to YouTube a lot in order to fix a washing machine, fix a clothes dryer, repair pipes in my home, um, toilet issues, like if the, if the flapper wasn't working right, fixing parts on my Gravely tractor, any of those John Deere help tips, Gravely help tips, vehicle help tips, interior appliance help tips that I found on YouTube, I thought, you know, this is a great platform to find information and learn how to do things. That's part of the reason we started this channel. So thanks to many of the commenters in our first video where I said I broke my John Deere 2210, some people said there are some alternatives to removing the drive shaft by splitting the tractor engine from transmission. And one of those was to take a fan like this one that I purchased, use a hacksaw, cut a notch the whole way through it so that you can just kind of Pac-Man mouth open it enough to get around the drive shaft it does bolt on with four bolts, so you'd go ahead and put those bolts in, just kind of close this back up. Now, some people would use like plastic weld to re-solder that piece that they've cut out. Some people just leave it as is and said, you know, with four bolts holding it, it stays in balance okay. It seems to work for a couple years. Other people, and I love this suggestion, said that there's a pattern you can download for a 3D printer to print a split apart version of this fan. I think that's genius. When I first saw the fan issue and heard that you had to split the tractor to get it off, I thought, why doesn't someone patent a split apart fan where you know it, there's a clasp over here that opens and closes. You can open it up, put it over the drive shaft, close it and clasp it. Seems like such a simple, no brainer design, but to my knowledge, no one makes a fan like that. So any of you out there looking for patent ideas, split apart fan for subcompact tractors to go over the drive shaft and cool the hydrostatic transmission, please include me on the patent. We'd like a little bit of that income. But uh, so instead of taking this to the dealership and instead of splitting it apart myself, which I think is probably beyond my skill set, my goal is to use my saw to cut this, see if we can slip it over top of the drive shaft, bolt it back on. We'll see how long it holds up. Now, I actually bought two of these so that if I mess one up, I've got a second one. Let's go ahead and get started, see if we can cut through this. And thank you all for the suggestions on uh, possible ways to make this repair, suggestions on things to do while I have it apart. So obviously if I were splitting this apart, I would absolutely replace those universals and the drive shaft it would be a perfect time to do it. 
and probably replace them with something that's a little bit easier to service. Because like I said, this drive shaft is impossible to get those grease strips serviced. I've got the John Deere 2210, the front end loader lifting the front end up off the ground. I've got some jack stands here for extra support. I've got a light underneath here so I can see what we're doing and give you a good shot with the camera of what we're working on. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that old fan off and then we'll start working on putting the new fan on. So underneath here, there's the fan that's broken. Here's the shield. There are 13 millimeter bolts right here. So I'm gonna use a wrench with an extension to get in there and get those loosened up. You don't have to remove them, just loosen them up and you're gonna lift off that. I've mentioned these gear wrenches before. You can see I have the 13 millimeter here. I'm gonna try to get into that bolt with that. It was too hard with the extension. I couldn't get the ratchet up in there. I think it's gonna be tight squeezed for any wrenches up in there. So we'll try this gear wrench that has the flexing head and the ratcheting feature. Actually it looks like it was made to fit right in there. So that's tightening. And remember we're not removing, we're just loosening enough to get the shield plate off. And you can see it's already loose on that side. And there we go. One more fan blade. So remember I said I had found six of seven. There's the seventh. So I had watched quite a few videos of people pulling this fan out without splitting the tractor or dropping the transmission. They were able to get up in here to the fan, remove the four bolts, cut it, put the new one in by cutting it. But I'm working on a John Deere 2210 and most of the videos I saw were a 2305. And the undercarriage is a little bit different. There's not nearly as much space to get to that fan in the 2210. And in order to get up into those bolts, I needed a long extension with a universal. Now I really would have liked to have one of those flexible extensions, but I don't have one. And they didn't have any wobbles at the store. So I'm just trying this universal and I was able to get two of the four bolts out. So I'm hoping if I rotate the drive shaft, I'd be to get the other two out on the bottom. And then I've got my tin snips to hopefully cut through that. And maybe we can get the new one put on there. I wanted to give you a view of how I'm in there. As you can see, I've got my universal connection here at the back by the fan. Long extension up here to the front where I've got my quarter inch drive. I tried with the three eighths and it was just too big to fit in here and kind of snake through underneath everything. So that's what we're looking at right there to get those out. And then I can just rotate this. It's difficult. I'm actually using one finger up here on the flywheel to help spin it. And one finger back here on where the fan was to spin that to get to the bolt so that I can unbolt all four of them. Okay, an update here. I've got it now all four bolts off. It's loose and I'm trying with the tin snips. You can see right here. I'm trying with the tin snips to uh, cut through that plastic. It's a lot tougher than I thought it would be. I'll give you an update here. Ta-da! I had to cut this like a, a notch out of it using tin snips and just shears in order to get that off of the drive shaft and it was not an easy task. I actually thought getting this off would not be as complicated, but cutting through that to slip it down over the drive shaft was hard. Hurts your shoulders working underneath there. You're at weird angles trying to use the tin snips. So hopefully much easier than splitting the tractor or removing the transmission, but definitely not an easy task. And we've been working on this for quite a while between last night and today. So it does take some time. I do have my safety glasses on and you can see I've drawn a purple line inside and out where I hope to cut that through, which will leave me two bolt holes above and below that line. I'm hoping to only cut it like that, but after seeing how the other one came off, I may need to cut it the whole way kind of across here in order to, to get this back on. So we'll try just one cut at first. I'm gonna put it in the vise here. I'm using my rigid reciprocating saw with a metal blade on it because I, try to, I wanna to try to have this be a nice clean cut.
just don't think I'll be able to spread that enough to get over that drive shaft. So I'm gonna make another mark over here and we will cut that also. Okay, we've cut the fan completely in half. Two bolt holes, top and bottom, four blades on the bottom, three blades on the top. And we will hopefully get that installed. Wanted to show you, I did try to strategically cut that so that there would be support. You see I cut inside the support there and there so that there'd be four supports on each with two holes. Well, it took a lot of effort but I was able to get that fan installed. The four bolts going back them were really hard because you can see there's not just even enough room for your finger to get up in here. So trying to line the bolt up with the hole in the fan and the hole, the tapped hole back here in that bracket that the fan bolts to was really difficult. All the while using my long extension on my one quarter inch drive to try to get those in so that took quite a while i'm going to say it probably took at least an hour just to get those four bolts back in you can see where my cut was here on the bottom in order to get that drive shaft to rotate i had to hit the starter a couple times just you know turn the key on just for a second before it would start to get the drive shaft to rotate because i can rotate it by hand just a little bit but it once you rotate it a little ways it's hard to get it to keep going so we're going to turn it on now and see if the fan spins without flying off and uh, then we'll put that protective cover back on. Well, that certainly was not an easy task, but we did get that fan replaced on the hydrostatic transmission of the John Deere 2210. Very similar process to what's needed to do on the John Deere 2305, but I believe the 2305 gives you a little bit better access. And I've read on some of the forums that on the 2305, you can actually release the clip on the front of the drive shaft, kind of slide it back and then forward to easily remove it. On the 2210, that is not the case. There is not nearly enough room. You can't get to that clip and you wouldn't be able to remove the drive shaft, at least from what I saw underneath my tractor. So tools you'll need, definitely. A creeper. You're just going to spend a lot of time underneath that tractor in a pretty tight space. I've got the front jacked up on jack stands, the back's jacked up. Um, other tools, a really good set of tin snips or shears. You have to cut through that old fan to get it off the drive shaft and that was not an easy task in itself. So really uh, a good set of shears would be great for cutting through that thick plastic of the old fan. A 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench to get the guard off of the fan. Now this was nice because it has the swivel head that made it much easier. There's not really enough room in there to get a socket wrench. So something like this works perfect. I also started out using this wrench, but I found that the three eighths inch size was just too big to get where I needed to get. So then I switched to the one quarter inch and I did buy this universal joint. It would have been impossible to remove those bolts from the fan without the universal joint and at least that much extension. And that is a 10 millimeter bolt. The guard is a 13 millimeter on your ratcheting wrench. And once again, if you need this fan, it is a John Deere part number LVU802815. I'll put links down below to the fan, these tools, a creeper, and everything I think you need to make that repair. Total time that I have in this is probably two to three hours. So not a quick task for me. It was my first time doing it. It was really difficult to get those bolts back through the fan. That probably took the longest amount of time. Second longest amount of time was cutting through the old fan to get it removed off the drive shaft. So not an easy task, but it saved somewhere around, you know, $1,000 to $1,200. And that's the dealership estimate, not including removing the cab. And I've always found that dealerships take a little bit longer than they originally estimate. So maybe somewhere between $1,200 and $1,500 saved by me putting that fan on myself. I did want to end by saying thank you to all of you that commented on the I Broke My John Deere video. Thanks for the words of encouragement. 
Uh, many of you told me ways that you thought I'd go to do this myself. Some of you said you thought I had the mechanical ability to give it a try, and I really appreciate that. You know, it was a struggle for me deciding, do I just take it to the dealership? They know what they're doing, but it's gonna cost me. I'm figuring in my head $1,200 this whole time. Um, so I really appreciate the words of encouragement and uh, the support from the commenters, and I, I appreciate that on every video, but specifically on this one where you encourage me to give it a try and see what we got. Some of you gave suggestions on how to cut that fan apart. Some of you even said, look, we can help walk you through taking the transmission out. So lots of great comments, lots of great emails about this project. Thank you so much for that. And that's one of the things I love about this YouTube community is everyone is so supportive and encouraging and helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you like videos like this, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, share with your friends, and we'll see you again the next time. Thanks for watching. One of the fan blades. The fan assembly that I was cutting from underneath the tractor with the tin snips. You'll also need a good set of jack stands.